Vikings are officially coming to Rise of Kingdoms and today we're going to talk about everything. The official Rise of Kingdom social media accounts just confirmed yesterday the existence of the Viking civilization that we've been talking about here on this channel for weeks now. It says we're going to be getting this update in about two weeks. I'm predicting that it's going to come out on May 24th. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. And there is apparently a Viking event that's going to be associated with this. So my assumption is the update will go live on the 24th and on the 28th, perhaps we'll see this event uh, start, which is exciting. Now, I do just want to bring to your attention that we talked about this on this channel on March 29th we predicted the Viking civilization coming into the game and now that there is some more credibility to this leak that means that the other civilizations here are more credible it's more likely that these are true because if part of the leak is true there's a good chance that the rest of it is but what I'm saying is you should subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a leak video for rise of kingdoms because you're gonna know about this stuff weeks before everybody else anyway with my my shameless self-promotion out of the way I do just want to let you guys know that from this point in the video on we're gonna be talking about uh, things that are roughly translated right and we're gonna also impose some of my opinion and speculation so treat this information as a leak okay so it might not be a hundred percent there but the source of this information and the you know the translations all come from the same source as this so it's pretty credible regardless this has been translated from the Korean side of rise of kingdoms that's where we got a lot of this information from and you could see everything on this page here is identical to what we saw officially posted on the social media accounts here in english as well so this page is not that exciting this second page here is a little bit more exciting this is where we see that monday may 24th date officially appear so that is nice of course there's going to be a maintenance reward as there always is and the launch of a new civilization viking i think it's weird that they keep calling it viking and not something like scandinavia Navia, right because Viking is not a place whereas if you look at all of the uh all of the other civilizations here in the game uh, th they're all places on the map right or at least they were so I don't know why they keep calling it Viking I feel like it's not going to be called that once it comes into the game because that would just be weird but um it it is worth noting that this screenshot does say that it will be a civilization you can change to at any time which means they're probably going to plop it right here next to Byzantium and you'll be able to use a civilization change or your 10,000 gems guys do do not use 10,000 gems to change civs. Just don't do it. Save up your alliance credits. Sell everything here that you don't need. Sell all those extra ethel flood sculptures and start saving these credits now. So that way, when the new civ comes into the game, if it's something that you are interested in and it's got good buffs, then of course you go ahead and change to it. We're going to speculate on the buffs later in this video. So make sure you stick around for that. But let's go ahead and read this, even though it's a rough translation. It says the heroes of the Northern Kingdom have come to the kingdom continent under the blessing of Odin. The heroes set out from the Scandinavian waste land and wield their sharp axes really sharp axes these look like swords to me bro anyway toward the rugged Mediterranean Sea they are adventurers and conquerors that's a that's an interesting word there right conquering huh interesting little hint there guided only by the Valkyries they spread their anger and conquer everywhere they reach in order to taste the sake of Odin in the kingdom of God so poor translation there it looks like they're serving their God Odin basically is what this is saying and that's what fuels their expedition here into the into your kingdom in rise of kingdoms that's basically what i assume the event is going to be right and we're going to talk about the event uh, down here a little bit more um but essentially i think there's going to be an event that launches with the new civilization uh and we'll talk about that in a second so it says now the berserkers war song rang and the viking civilization appeared the new commander of heroes in non in other non-legendary commander Ragnar Lodbrok is added to the pub. So this again, terrible translation by the way, but this is suggesting that there's going to be an epic commander and a legendary commander coming to rise of kingdoms in this update. That's weird. It's almost like I told you that already in this video. Now we can see here that Ragnar is likely going to be the legendary commander. We don't have a name yet for the epic commander that is coming with obviously this civilization. So if you're a new player in rise of kingdoms and you start the game with Viking, you're going to be getting whatever this epic commander is now it does say that ragnar is going to be added to the pub which means there is a 90 percent chance that ragnar is going to show up in gold keys which is a huge bummer that's a huge bummer um lilith lilith listen to me 
I'm doing you a favor, so please pay attention, okay? There's better ways to implement Ragnar than putting him in gold keys. Players do not want more things in the gold keys. Old players, we don't really care about gold keys anymore. New players, honestly, you need so many gold keys to make it an impact that it doesn't it doesn't really matter. And the more commanders you add to it, the probability of getting any individual commander goes down. That's how that works, right? So it actually becomes less useful to have more commanders in the gold keys. Does, does that make sense? Because you're not changing the probability of getting a legendary, but you're adding the amount of legendaries. It's actually worse. Put Ragnar in the metal shop. Put Ragnar here. Put him here where you have Ethel fled, right? Remember a month ago when you guys started that Ethel fled event and you started giving everybody Ethel fled for free. Yeah. A gift of gratitude. Thanks by the way, for a commander that we had two years ago, this is your opportunity to add Ragnar into the game at the end of this month, give players two additional weeks after his addition to the metal store to still get Ethel fled for free. And then after that, I don't know what you do with Ethel fled. Okay. I don't know what you do either leave her in the metal sh shop and rotate her in and out with Ragnar periodically or throw her into the gold keys. I guess, I don't know. That's not a great solution. Regardless Lilith, I know you're probably going to put him in the gold keys. I know you are because you're bad at your job. Please listen, please just, just, okay. Okay. Just there's a better way. There's a better way. And the reason it's better is because it builds goodwill with your free to play community. That's why it's better. Like there's actually an end goal to why I'm suggesting that it's not because I want stuff for free, right? Of course I do, but a majority of the player base needs something for free to keep them interested and feeling like they're competitive. And in business, you can't buy goodwill. A company's integrity is something that they build over time through, through their players, trusting them. And this would be a play towards supporting your goodwill with your community that you have so shattered. So hear me out. Do do this even though you won't. Okay. Rant over guys. The TLDR Ragnar is probably going into the gold keys because Lilith doesn't care about us. But in preparation for that, start saving your gold keys. Okay. If you care about this commander and you want to unlock him, start saving your gold keys because that's probably where he's going to be. Now, this last bullet point is interesting. It says by participating in the events can be obtained with other Viking nameplates, such generous rewards in non heroic commander. So this is a terrible translation, but what I'm understanding from this is that there's going to be an event with the Viking civilization release that will give you a way if you complete the event to unlock the epic commander that is that comes with that Viking civilization. My assumption is it will be just like the Dao Chan event that we saw when she came into the game. There was that bar and you, you did like 10 of them and you got uh, you unlock rewards along the way. And at the very top, you unlocked uh, Dao Chan. I assume this is probably going to be something similar for this. And the reason I think that is because it says nameplate. So we'll probably see a nameplate, an avatar frame, some experience tombs, some gold keys, you know, basic stuff like that. And at the top, you'll get this Epic commander, which means that you're probably going to be able to use your universal Epic commander sculptures on this new Epic commander, which is good. If the commander's good, if it's not, then you'll finish them off just like you did a Dao Chan. And you basically forget about her unless you use her for grinding barbs and it's pretty much useless and it's a waste of dev power and all that stuff. Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully this is going to be Sun Tzu 2.0, right? That's what I'm hoping, right? I'm hoping that's the case. Now, just like with Dao Chan and Lu Bu, I think there will probably be at least one bundle, if not two bundles associated with this event. Um, with Dao Chan and Lu Bu, we saw a $5 bundle for Dao Chan and a $20 bundle for Lu Bu. If I'm not mistaken, I may have messed those numbers up, but I wouldn't be surprised if they took the same strategy here for these two new commanders. Um, it would be nice if these two new commanders actually had synergy, just like Dao Chen and Lu Bu, but actually good, right? <laughs> Unlike Lu Bu, who's bad. Uh, hopefully this Ragnar is good because there's a lot of hype around this event and commander. And I think a lot of players want Ragnar in the game, right? Like as an, as a historical figure, people think he's cool. So I hope they don't mess him up by making him bad. Hopefully he's good. So yeah, my assumption, there will be a bundle associated here. The event will be free. You'll get the commander for free. It's great. Next, we're going to talk about this final translation here. So forgive me. I'm going to be looking at my second monitor for some of these translations. And then afterwards, we're going to be speculating a little bit about what these new commanders are going to be, uh, and also what the new civilization buffs are going to be. So again, stay tuned for that. This top box is talking about Osiris league. It says the Osiris league silver battleground registration rules will be modified to include alliances ranked 21st to hundredth in kingdom levels, combat power ranking so that leaders can experience a more improved experience through the Osiris league. So 
I guess this this is great, right? I, I I don't really participate in Osiris League, so this doesn't really affect me too much. But any optimization that's better for players is just good for Osiris League. So that's great. This second bullet point is actually really interesting, and this says a two week discount event will be held for players who purchase today's special bundles. During the event, you can purchase three products of today's specials at a discounted price in the form of today's specials set pack. So it sounds like for a two week period, there's going to be a way to buy all three of these chests for a discounted price than if you were to have bought all of them individually, which, you know, I think is good. I think most players who buy the dailies just buy all three, right? They just typically buy all three. At least that's what I've seen from alliances that I've been a part of when you're just going through and collecting the purchases made by alliance members. It seems like most players just buy all three. If you're going to buy them, you're going to buy all three. So it seems like there's going to be a two week period where you're going to be able to buy all three at a discounted price, which is great if you buy them. Full cost is only $6. So I don't really know what a discounted price could be. I imagine it's going to be four dollars because that will be a way for them to upsell you if you were just going to buy the top one and then it's either the same price or better value than a combination of the two so i don't know i think it'll be either four or five i mean there's no other choice right it's either going to be four or five dollars but regardless that's exciting if you buy these you're going to get a discount coming very soon for a two-week period the third box here talks about the battle log apparently they're going to be improving the battle log again to give more details that's great. It seems like they're still improving this with every single update, which is really nice. The more information that players have, the better because, well, knowledge is power. The fourth box here says Imperium Kingdom. The calculation method of Imperium Kingdom has been optimized. Troops within the Season of Conquest are now reflected in the total combat power. My assumption here is that if you're in com uh, if you're in the uh, Season of Conquest and your troops die, you get 50% of them back at the end of the KVK, right? So my assumption here is that they've optimized the Imperium ranking to include those 50% of troops that are guaranteed to be coming back. And I think that's a good optimization because it, they should be included because they will be coming back. So they're like, there's no avoiding it. You might as well include it anyway. And it prevents players from cheesing the system. It seems like they're constantly trying to optimize the Imperium rankings because players keep trying to cheese the system in some way or another. And if history repeats itself, they'll probably find a way to cheese it in the future. Okay. With all that out of the way, let's speculate on the buffs for this new Viking civilization. I personally think, and shout out to Chiskel because I think his video actually did a pretty good job at uh, deducing what is most probable. Um, and I think it's going to be an infantry civilization strictly because there are fewer infantry civilizations than the other troop types. So this is an opportunity for them to kind of balance that out, which I think is great. So I think we'll see infantry. I do again, think it will be infantry attack and troop training speed. That's my assumption because we already see Germany here, cavalry attack, troop training speed, Britain, archer attack, troop training speed, both by 5%. We don't see that uh, combination here for infantry. So it would sort of make sense if that were, you know, if that were the case. However, I want to draw your attention here to Arabia. It increases cavalry attack, which I think, again, I think this is going to give infantry attack by 5%, which is a bummer because infantry who cares about like their whole epic set gives you attack, right? So nobody really cares about infantry attack. It's useless because you're going to have a ton of it eventually. So regardless, we see that Arabia comes with by bars, right? And by bars is a conquering cavalry commander. I think based on the screenshots that we saw, this mentions conquering twice, right? They're adventurous and conquerous and conquer everywhere they reach. So I think the epic commander is probably going to be a conquering commander it could be radgar right it could be the legendary um but at least one of them is going to be conquering and if they then use arabia as the template which could happen uh we'll see the epic be conquering which would give you increase in infantry attack by five percent damage dealt by rallied armies by five percent and i also think we'll probably get troop training speed by five percent that would be really in enticing right and i think since they're adding this civilization so late in the game um i feel like it would be a civilization that is most beneficial for late game players right if you are a brand new player and the stats that you get are five percent infantry attack uh, five percent troop training speed and five percent increased damage dealt by rallied armies that's trash for a new player right that's garbage but because it's being added so late perhaps it will perhaps that could be the case because that would be a great choice for a late game infantry focused commander now again it would depend on the special unit because five percent infantry attack really isn't that exciting to me um but again this is all speculation right so my bet is 
5% infantry attack, 5% troop training speed, 5% damage dealt by rallied armies. That's my prediction. That might be too good. It might be too powerful. Uh, but again, the 5% attack is, is, is not that great. So that's kind of why I think it balances out. But just because the Epic commander is likely going to be infantry focused, doesn't mean that Ragnar, the legendary is going to be right. And so I actually have no idea what the, what Ragnar is going to be as a legendary. If they're going to put him in the gold keys, I don't think he'll be an infantry commander. That just doesn't really make sense. I also don't know if he'll be part of the next pair of commanders that come into the game. It just doesn't feel like he's going to be right. Uh, and, and I think the next pair of commanders that come into the game are probably going to be infantry, right? Aren't we due for infantry commanders? Plus we just had Harold come into the game not that long ago. So having another infantry Viking legendary, I don't know. It just doesn't seem likely. It seems like they'll probably do something else. My bets are on a leadership conquering commander. That last one, is it going to be skill or attack? Who knows? Imagine if it's another support infantry, that would be really cool. Although they just added Trajan, which is leadership support. So I doubt they're going to do that again with another commander. So my guess is leadership conquering attack, sort of like Julius Caesar. That's kind of lame. If I'm going to be honest with you, I hope he's like bust did good if he's if he's gonna be that because again we've talked about caesar too much on this channel to be clear and i still think he's trash but yeah that's my guess for ragnar anyway guys if you enjoyed this video and you made it all the way to the end make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it gets this video into the youtube algorithm so that way it's shown to other rise of kingdoms players if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below all of your thoughts opinions and predictions for the upcoming viking civilization and commanders as always my social media links are in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter facebook discord and everything else it's always down below as well as a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stocks it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms and it's a free way to support the channel plus it's just better playing rise of kingdoms on a big screen honestly i love seeing it on my large monitor and like i said it's free so if you don't like it you can always uninstall later but links down below check it out with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace